Today we are working with a Keyhen carburetor from a 1991 XR600R. We will go over the basics of how this carburetor works and talk about checking float level, changing idle and main jets, and positioning the clip on the jet needle. We've already taken off the gas drain bolt on the bottom and have removed all air hoses and the fuel line. Laid out here closest to us we have a jet needle, a pilot screw, the main jet standing up, and two idle jets furthest away from us. The throttle cables control the throttle valve using this pulley. The idle set screw adjusts the throttle valve by pushing on the throttle pulley to the desired position. We can see the throttle valve moving up here allowing more fuel and air to get past when the bike is idling. Here is the two level choke for this carburetor. When the choke is off, air is able to flow freely from the air intake to the combustion chamber as much as the throttle valve permits. This is necessary when at operating temperatures because the engine demands a lot of oxygen. When the choke is on, however, the choke plate will constrict the throttle body airway which will enrich the mixture. This is necessary in cold starting conditions when more gas is needed due to fuel condensation inside the engine. The system will equilibrate by pulling gas from the idle and pilot jet openings. We can get to the pilot screw, idle jet, and main jet from the bottom of the carburetor. The pilot screw can be adjusted without taking off the float bowl and the main jet, as we see here, can also be removed and changed as well without removing the carburetor if necessary. Here's the float bowl. Let's just check on the rubber gasket to make sure there are no cracks or tears. A rebuild kit will ensure no leakage, but visual inspection is usually a good enough test. I'm going to reinstall the main jet so that we can do all the jets together. To measure the float, you'll want to start the ruler at the carburetor body gasket surface and measure all the way out to the edge of the float. For this XR600 should be about 14 and a half millimeters. Looks like we're about spot on. You just want to make sure that the weight of the float bowl will not change your measurement. Then you can proceed with the ruler and check float height. To remove the float so that we can check on the float valve, all we need to do is remove the float pin. The float bowl and float valve can come apart easily at this point. You need to make sure your float has not taken on any fluids and if you need to change float level, carefully bend the float tang. The float valve is responsible for stopping the flow of fuel from the gas tank. When the float bowl fills up, the float rises and the float valve sits further in closing the line from the gas tank. Make sure this area is clean and free of residue. Now we will review the jets. The pilot screw is on the far left and is not replaced unless corrosion is expected. This is used for minute adjustments. Here we have one out for example. Next to that is the idle jet or the slow jet easily removed with a flathead screwdriver. Right now would be a great time to check for clogs. Next to this is the main jet. And the main jet attaches to the needle jet holder. Underneath the needle jet holder we begin to see the needle jet. This piece is adjustable as well and can change your fuel air ratio by determining how much fuel passes through the main jet. We will see more about this as we proceed. Now that we have both the main jet and a spare needle jet out, we can see how they mate. Now we should be careful not to bend our jet needle but to get to it we need to take off the top cover. Take off the two screws, remove the cover, and check out the paper gasket on top to make sure there are no tears. Once the top is off, 
we see the throttle valve and how it moves with the throttle cable pulley. We will need to remove that to get to the needle. Now remove the link arm set screw. Just got to be careful not to let the throttle spring go. Just simply pull out the pulley while holding it in place. Remove the throttle valve assembly and put the throttle pulley spring back into place behind the idle adjuster screw keeping it wound up. Now that we have our throttle valve out, we can get to our needle jet clip. First slide off the link arm and link arm spring, then remove the two screws so we can get to the needle jet. The needle has five locations for the clip and this will move the needle up or down. If the clip is lower, then the needle is held higher up in the throttle valve which leaves the main jet more open. Lower clip, richer mixture. We see here again the relationship between the needle jet and the needle jet holder and main jet assembly. If we install them into the carburetor, we can get a better representation of how they work together again. Now that we have disassembled our carburetor and made all necessary adjustments, it's time to put it back together. Begin with the link arm and link arm spring, making sure the direction of the arm falls into the throttle valve recess. Slide the assembly down into the carb body and work the throttle pulley out while keeping the spring from uncoiling just like we did in the disassembly. Install the arm set screw and check for smooth operation. Then replace the top cover making sure the gasket sits correctly. For our jets we will begin by installing the idle jet. The jets should be securely installed using a flathead screwdriver. Next will be our needle jet holder and our main jet which are connected. And now if you removed your float, replace the float valve making sure not to bend the tang. Replace the float and valve into the carb using the pin and then take another measurement to make sure everything is up to specs. Now it's time to replace the float bowl. Put the screws in and make sure that the rubber gasket is in place. One last item to check on this carburetor is the air cutoff valve. You want to remove the two screws and watch out for the spring. And the purpose of this is to check the diaphragm for tears, rips, or holes that could cause problems with your carburation. When reinstalling, make sure the spring is installed correctly and tighten your screws down. And there you have it. Hopefully this helps you get started on cleaning and tuning your carburetor. Thank you for watching and ride safe out there.